So we're going to have a look at the RRS rack and pinion and what sets it apart from everybody else's steering conversions. Uh, the very first thing to mention is it's a replacement for a steering box or a ram power steering system. Um, all of those were the best that you could get in their day, not anymore. Uh, the conventional power steer box has uh, a worm and sector shaft that as you move off the centre line comes out a mesh. A rack and pinion is constant mesh, so no matter where you are, you're not getting free play in the steering. The next thing, of course, is those particular gears in this have a modern ratio. So typically we're choosing ratios somewhere between 2.33 and 2.88 turns lock to lock, whereas a factory manual steering system is about five and a quarter on this model. Uh, a power steer unit is just shy of four, um, but all of that is outperformed by this, and it feels like a modern Mustang 2017. Okay, so I'll point out some of the unique features of our rack and pinion system. Firstly, it's a centre steer unit. So that means that all the activation of the steering drag bar is from the centre of the rack. And more importantly is the inner toroid position than the outer one. Um, you can balance the two, but the inner one, more than anything else, controls bump steer. You can test this out by moving that inner position up and down and see the amount of change in bump steer readings. And bump steer is when it goes over bumps, the wheels turn in and out because of inaccurate arcs of motion. So we've corrected all of that from the original. The other unique feature of any RRS rack is this linear tracking device here is the thing that sets our rack apart more than anything else. So the beauty of this little gadget is it provides a third stabilising link for the load that's generated onto this drag bar. If you didn't have this slider, there would be an excessive amount of load on the centre slider. And this is a really important thing when you're designing things, that everything has a load bearing capacity that matches or exceeds the original design. And this unique little bearing down here, it's got a recirculating ball system and it's mounted on a hard chrome shaft so it's weather resistant. It's the type of bearing you'd find uh, in a machine shop, in a lathe uh, assembly, you know, CNC, that type of thing. And this provides a third stabilising link so that this bar is firmly supported. It's really important when you design a critical component like a steering rack that it either matches but ideally exceeds the load bearing capacity of the original units. So if that's the case, then you've got a nice stable, long lasting unit and that's part of the reason why we provide a five year warranty because we just don't have things uh, of a critical failure. It just doesn't happen. The mounting brackets, as you can see, are just simple bolt-ins. They bolt into original locations. So the load that's generated on the chassis rail is replicated. It also triangulates around the rail with a load spreader on the outer edge. Very simple installation. The other part we've just been developing is our own manufactured design of universal joints. So these are now forged stainless, load rated to 230 Newton metres, uh, and they're a beautiful piece. So. Um, the next thing, of course, is it uses factory inner tie rod ends. This makes it very easy for serviceability. Uh, the mounting method is via two clamps to our adapters. This again makes it very easy to drop the rack in and out. Uh, you can use a standard power steer pump, you can use our aftermarket pump, or you can use our newly de developed electric power steer pump. Some of the critical factors in installing this, because we provide it as a complete kit with a column conversion kit, is making sure that the angles between the two universal joints are equal. Okay, so an RRS rack and pinion conversion kit comes complete with the inner tie rod ends. It comes complete with the mounting brackets to mount into the chassis. 
a full steering column conversion kit for whichever model uh, vehicle it's uh, applicable for. And of course, this is all part of the reason for our five year warranty because it's a comprehensive kit. Optional things are power steer uh, hydraulic lines, which have to be made correctly because otherwise you can get noises and vibrations and it can produce a horrible feel. We have options of tie rod adjuster sleeves instead of the horrible clamp type units. These are our billet ones which have a nice locking up, very easy to adjust. So one of the critical factors of installing this rack, it's very simple to bolt it into the chassis, it's very easy to connect up the tire ends. The most complicated part is once the column conversion kit is completed and installed into the column, it's about phasing the universal joints. If this is not done correctly, you can end up with a horrible notchy, lumpy feel to the steering. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, it's as simple as this. Once the column is connected and the two universals are connected and the column is basically hung from the dashboard, the most critical thing is the position in the firewall opening. As you can see, by moving that plate around, you can change this drive angle. These two angles have to be matched. It's about finding the sweet spot of the angle between the two universals. The way I normally do it is I cut a piece of paper that has a 42 degree angle on it. And that way you can slide it up and see how the angle of these two universals are going. And it's only to do, as you can see, the angles change with the positioning in the firewall opening. If you don't get this right, this will feel horribly lumpy. It's also part of the reason that uh, a lot of the power steer column conversions don't work so well because they have to drive through universal joints. So why would you go for anything less than RRS?